Welcome to 50 Plus Life 360. I'm Paul. And I'm Tamara. We are here to continue our Bible study series. Uh, our channel is going to be multiple categories, and this is our Bible study category. We have one video so far on, on our Bible study, and this is going to be our second in our series on Lamentations. We are in chapter 2 today. Um, we are getting ready to discuss Lamentations further. In our first video, we discussed the background of Lamentations. So today we're going, we're not going to discuss the background as much, but just to give you a brief synopsis in case you didn't see the first video, and you can always go back to the first video to learn more about the background, but essentially around 586, 587 BC, Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed by the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar II. And Jeremiah had warned of the destruction in Jeremiah chapter 25. And it was a situation where the Israelites were constantly rebelling. Jeremiah kept warning them and warning them, and they didn't listen. And God promised that he was going to destroy Jerusalem um, and restore it in 70 years. Uh, so if you want more of the background, check out Lamentations 1, that, that Bible study. Before we get started, we, we want to have a word of prayer. Dear Lord God, we thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you for allowing us to wake up and breathe this morning. We thank you for the goodness of your heart. We thank you for the time we have to do a Bible study and for the skill that you have given us to videotape it and share it with friends and family and the YouTube community. We pray that as we go through this Bible study, you will open our hearts and our minds and our eyes to see what you want us to see and to get the lesson you want us to, to receive. We pray that the Holy Spirit will be with us, guiding us through what we say and what we do during this time. We have faith that you will continue strengthening us in the Word. We have faith, and I have faith that, as you have said, if we continue in the Word, we get closer to you. I have faith that you will keep us all safe and healthy and well, our friends and our family. We pray that you will strengthen us and guide us and direct us. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who is our hope for salvation. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get started. We're in Lamentations chapter 2. And again, just just as a reminder, and I hate, hate to uh, be too begging and pleading, but if you like this video, please... Don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, and you can ring that notification bell and get notified whenever we upload a new video. We're new to this, so we're not sure how often or easy it's going to be to upload videos and get them going, but uh, we're going to try to upload on a regular basis. As we get further into it, we'll definitely let you know how, how often we're going to upload it. We do a Bible study every day. Some days, tomorrow and I are, are studying things that are personal to us, and we may not record those, but for a formal Bible study that we're posting on YouTube, we're going to try to stick in one book, stay in one series, or just select a topic and go through studying that topic. So again, if you, if you like it, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. All right, God's anger over Israel, Lamentations 2, verse 1. How the Lord has covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger. He has cast from heaven to earth the glory of Israel and has not remembered his footstool in the day of his anger. The Lord has swallowed up. He has not spared all the inhabitants of Jacob. In his wrath, he has thrown down the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground. He has profaned the kingdom and its princes. In fierce anger, he has cut off all the strength of Israel. 
He has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy and has burned in Jacob like a flaming fire, consuming round about. He has bent his bow like an enemy. He has set his right hand like an adversary and slain all that were pleasant to the eye. In the tent of the daughter of Zion, he has poured out his wrath like fire. The Lord has become like an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all its palaces. <clears throat> Excuse me. He has destroyed its strongholds and multiplied in the daughter of Judah mourning and moaning. And he has violently treated his tabernacle like a garden booth. He has destroyed his appointed meeting place. The Lord has caused to be forgotten the appointed feast and Sabbath in Zion. And he has despised king and priest in the indignation of his anger. The Lord has rejected his altar. He has abandoned his sanctuary. He has delivered into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord. And in the day of an appointed feast, the Lord determined to destroy the walls of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out a line. He has not restrained his hand from destroying. And he has caused rampart and wall to lament. They have languished together. Her gates have sunk into the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the nations. The law is no more. Also, her prophets find no vision from the Lord. That's the first nine verses of chapter two. And in these nine verses, what Jeremiah is saying is he is talking about Israel as a nation until he gets around about verse five, verse six. He talks specifically about the temple of God. Um, but you can see in here how he is, is lamenting the fact that God has just utterly destroyed the nation of Israel. But when you get to verse 5, he says, The Lord has become like an enemy. So the Lord is, is like an enemy to his nation, Israel because of their unbelief, their disobedience, their chasing after other gods and things like that. And in verse 6, he says, he violently treated his tabernacle, tabernacle like a garden booth. He has destroyed his appointed meeting place. He has caused the feast and Sabbath to be forgotten. And then it goes on to say, in verse 7, he has rejected his altar, he has abandoned his sanctuary, he is delivered into the hands of the enemy the walls of her palaces. When you think about the tabernacle, and we, we haven't really planned on going into the deep background of the tabernacle, but the tabernacle was a meeting place. It was a gathering place. It was where the priests were, where they carried out their sacrifices. And then inside the tabernacle was the Holy of Holies, and that's where... You can read about certain people weren't allowed to enter. No one was allowed to enter except the priest at his appointed time in an appointed way. But the Holy of Holies was where God's dwelling place was with man. And and in verse 6 and 7, we, we can see God's altar was there. He has rejected his own altar and abandoned his own sanctuary. That's how upset he was with Israel. And that's just something to remember and think about. Let's start back up in verse 10. We're going to go through verse 16 and pause there and just have a little quick discussion. <clears throat> verse 10, The elders of the daughter of Zion sit on the ground. They are silent. They have thrown dust on their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground. My eyes fail because of tears. My spirit is greatly troubled. My heart is poured out on the earth because of the destruction of of the daughter of my people. When little ones and infants faint in the streets of the city, they say to their mothers, where is grain and wine? As they faint like a wounded man in the streets of the city, as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. How shall I admonish you? To what shall I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? To what shall I liken you as a comfort, as I comfort you? O virgin daughter of Zion, for your ruin is as vast as a sea. Who can heal you? Your prophets have seen for you false and foolish visions. 
and they have not exposed your iniquity so as to restore you from captivity. But they have seen for you false and misleading oracles. All who pass along the way clap in their hands in derision at you. They hiss and shake their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem. Is this the city of which they said the perfection of beauty, a joy to all the earth? All your enemies have opened their mouths wide against you. They hiss and gnash their teeth. Surely they say, we have swallowed her up. Surely this is the day for which we waited. We have reached it. We have seen it. So as we think about verses 10 through 16, this is sort of the second section of Lamentations 2. But Jeremiah switches from talking about the nation and the tabernacle to now he's speaking about individual individual Israelites, the horrors that they, they have faced through this destruction. He talks about the elders being silent. They sit on the ground and it used to be at the city gate the elders sat and they they discussed and they talked and they even to a certain degree helped with disputes and passed judgments and, and quoted the law. <clears throat> but now they're silent. They've thrown dust on their heads and are clothed with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground and then Jeremiah says his eyes are failing because of tears and we talked about that yesterday or not yesterday but in our last video on Lamentations 1 about weeping and crying and how Jeremiah described it in Lamentations 1 and how David described it in early few psalms like Psalms 1 through 6 he talked about crying so much um, and weeping um, but Jeremiah is going through this now his spirit being troubled and his heart poured out on the earth because of the destruction of the daughter of his people. He says, When the little ones and infants faint in the streets of the city and beg to their mothers that they're hungry and thirsty, they faint like a wounded man. If you can envision an infant or a toddler just falling out in the street from hunger and pain, their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. Um, children are dying. Um... <clears throat> Jeremiah says the ruin is as vast as the sea. Uh, if you've ever been on the sea in a boat, you just look out and you see nothing but waters forever and ever it seems. That's how vast the destruction has been. And then he talks about prophets seeing false visions. There, there are other prophets in Israel besides Jeremiah and the ones we know and the ones that we have books about, but they're beginning to, to fail. They're having false visions, foolish visions, false and misleading oracles. And then he talks about the enemies, or even not necessarily the enemies, but maybe just the neighbors. They're clapping their hands. They're hissing and shaking their heads at Jerusalem and Israel. Is this the city of which they said the perfection of beauty and joy to all the earth? Well, it's destroyed now. It was the perfection of beauty and a joy to all the earth. But now, because of Israel's disobedience, it has been laid to waste. They, the enemies say, we have swallowed her up. And there's an exclamation point there. Now we're reading from the um, NASB, New American Standard Bible. Your version may say something a little different, but we have swallowed her up. Surely this is the day for which we waited. It's You can just see it's a conquer mentality. We have won. We have destroyed the most perfect city on, on the planet. Um, and that's, that's the rejoice and the derision that the enemies and even the neighbors of Jerusalem are scoffing and scorning at, at Jerusalem now because it's destroyed. Now we'll pick up in, in verse 17 and we'll go to the end of the chapter, which I believe is verse 22. Um, and you're going to see a shift here too because... Lamentations 2 is sort of divided into three areas, three to four areas, but the first section, as we discussed, is Israel, the nation, and the temple, and then we talk about the people of Israel and what the enemies are saying, the horrors that the, the people of Israel are, are going through, and now we're gonna, you're going to see a little shift here as we go to the end of the chapter, starting in verse 17. The Lord has done what He purposed. He has accomplished His word, which He commanded from days of old. 
He is thrown down without sparing and has caused the enemy to rejoice over you. He has exalted the might of your adversaries. Their heart cried out to the Lord. O wall of the daughter of Zion, let your tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief. Let your eyes have no rest. Arise, cry aloud in the night. At the beginning of the night watches, pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him for the life of your little ones who are faint because of hunger at the head of every street. See, O Lord, and look, with whom have you dealt thus? Should women eat their offspring, the little ones who were born healthy? Should priest and prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? On the ground in the streets lie young and old. My virgins and my young men have fallen by the sword. You have slain them in the day of your anger. You have slaughtered, not spared them. You called as in the day of an appointed feast. My terrors are on every side. And there was no one who escaped or survived. In the day of the Lord's anger, those whom I bore and reared, my enemy annihilated them. And that's the end of, of Lamentations 2. But this shift here, as you see, um, <clears throat> starting in verse 17, Jeremiah has, has moved his focus from the, the nation and the individual Israelite to sort of admonishing and just reminding the people that the Lord has done what he said he was going to do. He has accomplished his word, which he commanded, and he is thrown down without sparing. And this one is sort of, sort of something you have to think about, but he has caused the enemy to rejoice over you. This is his chosen people, yet he allowed the enemy, their enemies, to rejoice over their destruction. He exalted the might of the adversaries. He made them even stronger than what they normally would have been. So he goes on and talks about the tears and the crying, pouring out their heart like water before the presence of the Lord. He says, lift your hands to him for the life of your little ones who are faint because of hunger. Well, he's, he's telling the people, he's reminding them, God has passed his judgment on you. You need, again, as he has done many, many times in Jeremiah, you need to turn to the Lord. You need to lift up your hands. You need to cry to him. You need to, to uh, reach out and, and begin following what God wants you to do. And in verse 20, he says, See, O Lord, and look, with whom have you dealt thus? Should women eat their offspring? The little ones who were born healthy? I, I'm not sure that's actually happening, but he's, he's, Jeremiah is, is crying to the Lord. He's asking him, should this get so bad that women want to eat their own children because they're starving? Healthy children. Should the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? But he says, for certain, on the ground in the streets lie young and old. So there are people dying. There are people that have been killed. There are people that are just, that weren't killed, that were spared or starving. The young children are having issues with, with hunger and thirst. Um, so here in verse 20, he begins to cry out to the Lord. Um, and we see this in, ver in, in chapter 1 in Lamentations. We also see David do it all the time. David sins. It creates complications for him, but he turns back and calls to the Lord, and it, it's almost as if he's ordering the Lord to do something for him. Um, but here, Jeremiah is saying, Lord, look, do you want this to, why have you done this to us? With whom have you dealt thus? Should women eat their offspring? He says, with whom have you dealt thus? And he's, you don't need to remind God of anything, but he's sort of saying, this is your chosen people, and you have dealt thusly with us. Should the women eat their own babies? And then as we continue in verse 21, his virgins and young men have fallen by the sword. You have slain them in the day of your anger. You have slaughtered, not spared. You called as in the day of an appointed feast, my terrors on every side. And there was no one who escaped or survived. And then he closes chapter 2 by saying, In the day of the Lord's anger, 
Those whom I bore and reared, my enemy annihilated them. And that's that's another bit of pain for the whole whole nation. They're you know, think about your own children if if you have children. You you bore them, you reared them, and the enemy destroys them. And it's all because of the the, the disbelief, the um, problems, the disobedience, the following false gods, and everything that Jeremiah had warned the people not to do, they continued to do it. And it's a, it's a strong reminder for us, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's been a great lesson so far. It's, it's a reminder to us that God wants us to do something or doesn't want us to do something. And if we don't listen, what, what happens? We get punished. You, you can get punished. Whether that punishment is, I, I said this in the Lamentations 1, whether that punishment is something that happens to you, your family, here on earth, or whether it's the ultimate punishment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's amazing what the correlation is between this and Sodom and Gomorrah and what they were going through here and what Sodom and Gomorrah was going through and how the wrath was played out much the same. Yeah, very similar. Mm -hmm. Very, very similar. But I want you to understand and take away from this just a few things. Lamentations, I mentioned this in the first video. These are poems. And they may not rhyme. You know, you always think, somebody says poem, you think about light, bright, height, might. You know, it's got the end of each line's got to rhyme. Not necessarily, but these are poems, much like the songs were, were mostly songs. Um, these are poems. They were written in a very specific way. There's five lamentations, five chapters. The first four are sort of alphabetical from A to Z. Let's just say that. The... Um, last one is, is sort of backwards it's Z to A so to speak if, if you had the original text um, but each one of these lamentations so far we're in two but it, it they're, they're sort of segmented it's not all just groaning and moaning and, and you shouldn't get hung up if you're trying to read through lamentations and say oh he's just whining over something that happened you know 2,500 years ago. It, yeah, he's he's lamenting all this, but each, like Lamentations 1 was similar. Lamentations 2 is he starts out talking about the nation and the tabernacle. Then he talks about the people. Then he talks about the enemy. Then he talks about God and what God has done what he promised. And then he begs God. So now, as as we as a as a people on Earth go through history that you're in right now, 2022, 2023, and you think you see you think you see all these signs and things. When you're praying, you should be thinking like like Lamentations too. Our nation has turned its back on God. Church attendance is down. People that believe in God are down. Atheist numbers are up. Our nation is is ter- is having terrible times. Then you can think about the people of the nation, individual people, people that are shot in the street for no reason. I mean, in our local area, a little girl was playing a video game a few nights ago, and a drive-by shooting happened in the neighborhood. She was hit by a bullet and killed. Um, I I read a story about on the news yesterday about a guy that was, he was one of these social media influencers, but he was a really good guy apparently based on everything I I read and studied about him. He was living in Los Angeles and he, he went home for Christmas to be with his mom and his grandmother and his grandmother asked him to go to the store with him. Well, he went to the store with his grandmother and he was sitting in the car outside. I do that a lot with my wife. Mm-hmm. I'm, I go to this, we go to the store, and if she's just popping in for one or two things, I, I'll sometimes just sit in the car. Especially um, if there's a cold snap and it's 20 degrees <laughs> yeah. outside. And it's too cold for me to get out. And sometimes I'll go in and help shop and carry groceries. But if it's just, you know, she popped in for some bread the other evening, and 
She said, you want to go in? I said, you just getting bread? Yep. I'm, I'll just sit here. And, I, you know, that's probably not the nicest thing for me to do. But, but he was doing the same thing. He was sitting in his car. And his grandmother's in the grocery store. He was shot in his car for no reason. Just shot. He wasn't an enemy. To, even though he was an influencer on social media, he wasn't an enemy of anybody. All his posts on social media were, were, they were comedic, but they were uplifting. He wasn't a bad guy. He wasn't a guy that you would say deserved that type of judgment on his life. But, again, Lamentations 2. Think about our nation. Think about individual problems that happen with individual people. Think about your own life. What are you going through? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you feel like you're not... do what you get but just remember that God gives us stumbling blocks he gives us problems he gives us issues he allows these things he doesn't always just say you're going to have this problem but he allows us through our free will to create some of these problems but the reason he does that is because he can see the other side and he can see that as we come out if we, if we work through that problem the right way, we come out with a stronger faith in Him and belief in Him. So those problems, those issues, those sad moments, those deaths, those those problems are all for a reason. Um, They're what builds you up, what makes your faith even greater. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So you can't lament everything that happens. Even though Jeremiah and we're studying Lamentations, he's seriously lamenting. He's crying so hard that his, that his eyes are failing. Um, but again, nation, people, enemies. Who is your enemy? Is it some person down at the supermarket that made you mad a couple weeks ago and now they're your enemy? Is it somebody on social media you thought were a friend and they didn't wish you Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday? All that's just minuscule. But, but the real enemy of our nation is Satan. So we have to we have to be on guard against him, and we have to pray our way out of temptation, pray our way that we we're not tempted by evil, but we overcome evil with good. We have to stay in prayer, stay in the Word, um, and then the last part here, you know, as we were talking from well, not quite the last part, but verse 17, the Lord has done what He purposed. He has accomplished his word, which he commanded from days of old. Okay? He's going to do that no matter what. If he has made a promise, God is the one one that will never fail his promise. Period. The Lord will do what he purposes. So you've got to remember that through your life. That whatever God purposes, he's going to accomplish. And that's it. Period. There's no gray areas there's no it's just going to happen mm -hmm. but then as he he gets down to verse 18 their heart cried out to the lord and then verse 20 see O lord and look now this is where we get in to we're, we're going from looking at our nation to looking at our people to looking at our enemies now we're turning to god and saying lord god please help we're begging out crying aloud in the night lifting up our hands to him it's it's all about talking to the lord being with the lord having those heart-to-heart -heart relationships and discussions with god and praying that things will change but you can't always just pray yourself out of problem you've got to do what the will of god is you've got you've got to do the work like the Israelites were disobedient. You can't expect to be disobedient and continue your work with God and continue to walk with Him and continue to get the blessings that He has because He's commanded blessings, but He He's not going to give you blessings if you're disobedient. So I think in in all reality, that is really the lesson for today is relating Lamentations 2 to our current world 
and looking at the situation our nation, our world is in, looking at the situations people face, looking at the problems you face, looking at what the enemy is doing, and then turning to God and hoping and praying and getting some relief and hopefully turning this nation back around, at least turning yourself back around because it starts with you because the nation is made up of people. So the more people that turn to God and not away from God, the better this nation is going to be and this world is going to be. And God knows that we need a few more good examples in life, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I have for Lamentations 2. If you like this Bible study, again, subscribe, hit the notification bell, feel free to comment. We are in a learning process, doing videos. We're learning how to edit. We're learning how to, you know, do all these fancy things with the videos and make them look decent. We're experimenting with camera angles, lighting. We're just, you know, just being honest with you here. The videos may not look the best. Uh, they may not sound the best. You probably hear some gurgling in the background. That's our uh, fish tank. We have some some pretty cool fish, but. Our fish tank is gurgling. Every once in a while, you might see a cat hop up on the table and go across. Um, if you watch uh, Lamentations 1 video, you may see a weird presence come through yes. the video. Um, Could be a Holy Spirit, maybe. You never know. Um, we had a, had a little weird thing happen in that video, so I'd encourage you to, to go look at that one. And we... we um, we're going to try to do this not all serious. We're going to have some fun with it, as you may have seen if you watched the first video. We had a little fun. We did. <laughs> I had a little bit too much fun. <laughs> Maybe I was slightly distracted by my levitation techniques. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. We're going to tackle uh, Lamentations 3. And it, it really gets, Lamentations 3, middle, middle book of, or middle chapter of the book of Lamentations. You got one and two, and then you got three. And when you get to three, there's a large section in there where, where Jeremiah begins talking about hope. So that's a, that's a really good uh, section to go through. Um, so we want to uh, tackle that. Uh, chapter 3 is actually wh where we decided to study Lamentations. We were studying some Psalms and we, we got distracted. I don't want to say distracted. I think the Holy Spirit led us. Um, we, we were doing some research about what was going on in the Psalms and researching some terms and things like that. And we landed in Lamentations 3. And we read Lamentations 3 um we got into uh, a verse let me see if i can find it real quick the chapter 3 verse 44 says you've covered yourself with a cloud so that no prayer can pass through and and we'll get into that in our study on lamentations 3 but again that that's what led us to lamentations sort of discussing this lamentations is history and you can comment on history all you want but it's history is fact so we don't have a ton of commentary on the history. We try to provide a little background, but what we're trying to say is we're trying to relate this history to something we can use today in our lives. And, and the lesson we get from this is some lessons about how to pray, how to grieve for our nation and our people, and how to turn to God and ask for intervention and help. Um, and again, the biggest lesson that you see throughout Lamentations is God fulfills His promises, and He promises to destroy the unbeliever, the disobedient. So if you're not a believer, or you're disobedient, you believe, but you've been disobedient, there's no better time looking at the events of today's world to turn back to God. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you agree? Definitely.
We've had to do that in our own lives lately. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially me. Um, so we encourage you to do what you need to do in your life. And I said this in, in Lamentations 1 video. The Word of God tells you what to do and what not to do and how to obey and what disobedience looks like. So if you have concerns and questions about that, just first step, start reading the Bible. So that's about all I have for today. Do you have anything else to add? Only we're only human, y'all. Only human. Thank you.